Hey everybody, good morning, good afternoon, welcome to Active Rain University. My name is Bob Stewart. We're going to talk about some blogging blueprints for local events and local businesses. We're here to, to learn a little bit about you know, how do we write the most, in the most efficient manner for our local events or the local businesses that we might be wanting to highlight in our blog. And I think there's, there's two main reasons, and one would be to just get web traffic, okay? These types of posts, and I'm going to show you here in a second, these types of posts can generate an amazing amount of traffic, but the real reason that we're getting traffic like this, because these aren't people that are necessarily interested in buying or selling real estate with us today, right? I think the main reason we write these types of posts is for the exposure that they can get us, okay? So don't fall asleep on me again. I, th I don't think these templates are are really groundbreaking in any way other than um, it gives you a, a real succinct way to write about local businesses or local events. So the first, the first thing we're going to start with here is going to be the local businesses. And again, you'll get this template. We also have some demo posts. I actually have this post up live so you can go in and look at the posts themselves. So here's the kind of the anatomy of the local business post. And we're going to go through each section of this local business post right now. So the first thing is going to be the title. Okay, so the title of our blog post is going to be, you know, what becomes the page title. It's going to be the first thing that that search engine is looking at when they're deciding whether or not they want to rank our post. It's essentially us telling the search engine, this is what our blog post is about. So the title becomes ultra important and in my thing here I've got you know local business demo but essentially my title would be the Acme Barbershop. Now I want to include the company name. That's that part's pretty obvious. And that I want that to be the first thing that I include in there if I'm writing about a local business. Okay? The next part of the title is I want to have something in there for which the, the people that I'm writing about may be excited to rank for. So in this case, this is actually the barber shop on Capitol Hill in Seattle where I go to get my haircut. I'm going to, to kind of augment my, the company name portion of my title with something they might be excited to rank for. So I'm going to do best men's haircut in Seattle. Okay? I want to be able to, because I'm going to go in and, you know, Ian's the guy that cuts my hair, and I'm going to talk to Ian when I'm in there and say, Ian, I'm writing a blog post about, um, about Acme Barbershop, and I realize you guys have a website, but... You know, my, my blog ranks pretty well. I may be able to get this thing on the first page for just the name of your company, but I'm going to get it on there for the best men's haircut in Seattle. Okay? So that's, that's where I look at my title. Now, in the first kind of portion of my blog post, I'm then going to repeat or restate that title. So Acme Barbershop, best haircut in Seattle. Pretty simple. Okay? I think... When we start to look at local events and like the Bite of Seattle and you know, if you're writing about local businesses that have really good web coverage or exposure, right, they're being reviewed on Yelp and they're being we, that second portion, that part that you know is something that they might be excited to rank for, that's the part that you really gotta, you know, kind of put your thinking caps on, right? So in my case, best haircut or best men's haircut in Seattle. So the second part is going to be the general information. And there's, you know, we have a lot of kind of long-time Active Rain members that join us for these calls, and you guys have written these types of posts before. And you guys realize that when you write these types of posts, people do actually call you or, or they email you with questions about it. And a lot of those questions are kind of based on that general set of information. Right? So if I'm writing about the local barbershop, I'm not, you know, it's not beyond the scope of possibility that I'm going to get a phone call that says, hey, what time is this place open? Or how much does the, the, the how much does it cost? And some of these people don't even realize that you're not actually like the proprietor of the business, right? They're just calling to get the information. So we want that first portion to be that general information, the the who, what, when, where, why's. And this is going to vary from business to business, right? For my particular business, right? How much does a haircut cost, right? That's something I'm going to want to get in there. Where is it located? What are the hours? You know, what are they providing? Okay, I've got a link in there, and when you're writing a local business post like this, it's important somewhere in the post that you get a link back to the company's website. And so in my case, right there in that cost line, I've got a link back that goes back for you to see a full list of Acme Barbershop prices, right? 
Then I'm going to get a con some contact information in there. And, and again, in my case, Ian's the guy that cuts my hair. Um, I'm doing this to, to benefit Ian. Okay, I want people to know the best men's haircut in Seattle. Ian's my guy, so I'm going to I'm going to leave his name as the contact, and then I'm going to leave a phone number in there. Now, again, this kind of general information, I think it's best left in just those. This isn't really bullets, but it's real easy for somebody to get that that basic set of information up front. The next portion, as we move on, would be a clearly stated subheader. So right below my general information, and you can see it right there below, the specializing in men's haircuts on Capitol Hill, I'm going to use the, the template or the blog post that I give you that you can actually copy has this formatting in it. But in order to get that sort of a look, what I do, I just highlighted the word specializing in men's haircut in Seattle, and I used on a Mac, Command-2, which gave me an H2 header tag, or I believe on a PC it would be Control-2. So by highlighting and then hitting Command-2 or Control-2, we can get that kind of larger text, okay? It's just a clearly stated subheader. This is what you're getting at Acme Barbershop, right? They specialize in men's haircuts on Capitol Hill. And I'm going to give them my experience and this is this is the part that makes your blog post about the business a little bit different than just the company's website okay in that first paragraph I'm just giving them kind of I mean this is almost what you would expect to see on the on the website right they've been cutting hair since 2004 and it's a mostly male staff and right? but, but somewhere in that first paragraph or two I want to give them my experience because this is a local business that I frequent Okay, so I'm going to let him know. I, Ian's the guy that cuts my hair, and I'm just going to give him what it's like, right? He's consistent. Every time I go in there, I get a good haircut. Um, you know, I, I rarely have to wait. I can call ahead if I want to and make an appointment with it. I'm just giving him a basic set of experiences that somebody looking online for that best men's haircut, they know there's a real person out there that's been to this place, and, and I actually use it, right? simple, right? Some of us, I mean, if, it, if this is a place that you frequent quite often, you may be able to, to pump out three or four or five paragraphs about how great this place is. Okay, so don't feel like it's only going to be two paragraphs or, you know, you can write as much as you want about a local business that you really, that you really like, but the, the key component there is share your experience with them. And then I'm going to always, when I write about a local business, give the reader a way and possibly a reason to connect with that business on social media. Okay, so most businesses these days have have a, a Facebook business page, for instance, or maybe they're on Twitter, or maybe they have a, a Google profile or something of that nature. I'm going to find some way to allow that consumer to connect with that business outside of just sending them to the business's website. Okay, so in this case, I just at the bottom there, I, just, I include a link. You can also follow Acme Barbershop on Facebook. That's the way, right, where they will occasionally share some special discounts. That's the reason. So Acme will get in there, and every once in a while they'll say, hey, come get your hair cut this Friday, and we'll give you five bucks off. Right? So they do these kind of special things that we can't necessarily dictate for the local business, um, them doing that, although you know, maybe we make a suggestion to them. Hey, do you guys have your Facebook page set up? Are you doing anything creative on there to – to encourage people to connect with you or, or to give them a reason to connect with your business on social media. So we want to give them away, but somewhere in there we want to give them that reason. Here's why you would want to head over and connect with the Acme Barbershop on Facebook. So a couple of things we learned about writing about local businesses. And again, I'm going to come back here. We'll come back to that slide in just one second. At the end, and Carrie will send these, these out to you guys. So here's the one we're going to look at next for the Bite of Seattle. Here's the post for the Acme Barbershop. Okay, that's what the post is going to end up looking like. And this is not, I mean, this literally took me about 10 or 15 minutes two days ago when I wrote this thing up. Okay, that's what it ends up looking like. 
one thing I didn't mention is get that image in there. And I took this image from their website. Okay, I had my hair cut a week ago with Ian. I let him know I was going to do this, and I said, "Hey, do you, do you guys mind if I go on your website, grab one of the images from the site, use it in my blog post?" And Ian said, "Heck no, have at it." So I, I grabbed the image from their website. Here's what you'll be able to do: you'll have the templates as kind of a guide to look at. But if you want to take this exact formatting and create a new blog post for yourself, here's all you would do. You would come in here and copy my blog post, right? Just highlight it, copy, and then you would head back to your blog, and you can do a new blog entry and just paste it right in there. So we've got the formatting held itself. So you don't have to worry about figuring out how to make this thing bigger, right? You would just come in here and replace whatever you wanted to say. Right, you come in here, change this stuff around a little bit, but I've got that formatting in there so it's consistent for you guys, and you don't have to figure out how to how to lay this thing out so that it looks like I have mine looking here. So, a couple of things we learned then from local businesses: we want to rank for something about the business, okay? And that's that's where I use best men's haircut in Seattle. So really think about getting that into your title. Think about that maybe potentially being part of that subheader that I use, right? Obviously, if I'm if I'm writing about this being the best men's haircut in Seattle, somewhere in the body of the content, I'm going to have impressed that upon people so that it all kind of comes together from a search engine optimization perspective. We want to have a chance for them to connect to the business. And in my case, I used you know, leading them back to the business's Facebook page, and again, I gave them a reason why. Now, with these local business posts, I think you can use these as an opportunity to make a connection in your business, and, and here's what I mean by that. How do you kind of make that leap from writing about the local business to actually making a connection in your business? Now, you're going to get the traffic, you're going to get the exposure, but one of the things that I've never done, this is actually the first time I'd ever let Ian know that I blog. Right? I mean, I kind of told him what I do, but I'm not a real estate agent, so I'm not you know, in your guys' shoes exactly. But if I'm going to write about a local business, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let them know. I'm going to let them know about it. Right? And a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of people might assume that a local business owner is going to be a little bit skeptical if I just came to Ian and said, hey, Ian, I'm going to write a blog. You know, I'm, a, I'm a real estate agent. Um, I keep a blog. It's for information for people who either live in the area or move into the area, and I want to write about your barbershop. Sometimes people are going to think, oh, well, Ian might be like, okay, well, what do you want from me? Right? And I don't necessarily want anything from Ian. I'm just sharing with him that, that I'm going to do it. And one of the ways I did that, I said, hey, I'm going to write a blog post about you. Do you mind if I take an image from your website? Another way I could do it is, hey, do you mind if I take a few pictures of the barbershop that I'm going to use? in my blog, you know, I'm a, I'm a realtor and and I keep this blog for, you know, to keep people up to date on on, you know, the the best places around the community. Then I'm going to do it. Okay? I'm going to go out there and do it. Now, if I can get my blog post to rank on the first page for best men's haircut in Seattle, right? Then when I come back the next time I get my haircut, I'm going to revisit that with Ian. So I'm going to say I'm going to be sitting in the barbershop chair, and I'm going to say, oh, bye, hey, Ian, by the way, did you see that now if you go to Google and you type in best men's haircut in Seattle, my blog post in the third position with your name on there? Right, so I'm going to revisit it with him. And at that point, I'm going to take an opportunity to say, you know, I am a real estate agent, Ian, and geez, you talk to a lot of people all day in your chair, buddy. I would love it if, you know, if the next time somebody brings up buying or selling a house, if you would think to to possibly refer them to me. So I'm going to let them know about it, I'm going to go out and do it, and then I'm going to revisit it with that local business owner. Right? A lot of us are walking into local businesses every day, and we never take the time to, to meet the owner, to ask about you know, who's running this place, to, to make that connection for our business. So this is one way that with local businesses in your area, you can you know, start to make connections with people. And real estate, we all know this, it's about making connections. right? How many connections can we make for our business? How many people can we have out there thinking about us when somebody they know is thinking about buying or selling real estate? We're going to talk about a couple of things. So hopefully you guys are all still awake. Wake up. Okay, so you're awake, I hope. Don't forget, you sell real estate. All right? And this, this particular class in the Blogging Blueprint series, the past ones that we did, we did 
how to do a market report, how to do a local community blog, how to blog about your listing. Those are all very kind of directly related to your real estate business, okay? I realize that writing about local events and local businesses is not, but again, it gives us an opportunity to potentially make a connection, okay? It gives us a lot of traffic, or potentially a lot of traffic, gives us good exposure, right? We saw Amy earlier who'd gotten, what, 14,000 30-second commercials, okay? But don't forget, at the end of the day, you sell real estate. So what are some of the things that we can do to make sure that if somebody lands on our post, they know we sell real estate? And I think probably the number one thing, and th this, this holds true across any type of a blog post that you've written, is that right-hand column in your blog. Okay? And you'll notice in mine, I've got a little widget from my IDX site that I have placed right there. So as they're reading this blog, right, what are the chances that somebody's even thinking, oh, I want to find a house? It's pretty stinking low, right? Pretty stinking low. But when you have 14,000 people that got exposed to your content, like Amy did, right, is there a chance that one or two of those people might be thinking, you know what, I do want to start looking at some houses. Yeah, it's pretty low chance, but there's a chance. Okay, so we want to make sure that that right sidebar has something in it. It could just be links. Okay, let me bring this back out here and look at. So I've got my, my search widget in here where they can search for a home on Capitol Hill or Green Lake or, or wherever, right? I've also got some links that I included down here, like homes for sale in Seattle, homes for sale on Capitol Hill, homes for sale in Ballard, condos for sale in Seattle. So you can add or remove links to the sidebar of your blog by coming into this little area right here, okay? I embedded that widget, and again, that widget is something that I got from my website provider. I embedded that by coming up here and going to the blog settings area, right? And this is just the piece of code that my website provider gave me that included that widget. So now, once I post that in there, I come back to my blog, my widget's going to show up here on the right, okay? The next little piece that you really want to make sure that you are, are thinking about is this signature line. Okay, so I've got this, my basic contact information, my phone number. Apparently, when Carrie and I got married, I took Carrie's last name. Um, I've got a little link in here if somebody's looking to buy or sell a home in Seattle. Okay, and then on my particular blog, I've got some, some options for them to be able to connect with me out there on other areas of social media. Right? So you really want to think about this sidebar. What do you have in this area, right? Because we just, Amy had 14,000 people that, that landed here and were looking at this page. And you want to think about this signature line, okay? These will be kind of the small little hooks that we can have out in the water for, for all of that traffic that we can potentially generate that relate to our real estate business. And again, you know, the likelihood is pretty stinking small that somebody's going to find our blog about a local event and then become a lead on our website, but it's not zero. So we want to make sure that we have, you know, these kind of more passive calls to action because I'm not going to just throw a big link or a big button or a big image in the middle of this post that says, hey, find a house, right? That would defeat the, the, the kind of purpose of the blog, which would be to educate them about the Bite of Seattle. But... I do want to make sure that I've got these other kind of calls to action around the content. Okay. So, ready, set, right. For the 50 or so of you guys that have joined us here that are not currently Rainmakers, if you would like to try out a Rainmaker account for a dollar, I think it's actually two dollars, the first two months for a dollar a month, you can go to arpromo.com forward slash two months. That'll come out in the email that we send out afterwards with the correct links to the templates and also the links back to these posts that I said that I've showed you guys, the kind of the full post where you can just copy and utilize the formatting that I've used.